Okay, so you might have had some practice shifting functions when you are given an equation. Well, you can also shift functions if all you have is a graph. So I want to show you how that looks. So I have just drawn some random lines on my paper here, and I'm calling it f of x. So I'll use some color here so we can distinguish between the two graphs that I'm going to overlay on here. It's going to look messy when I'm done, but hopefully you can follow. So the first one we want to graph is y equals f of x plus 2. So this is a plus 2 after we find those y values. So this corresponds to a shift exactly up 2. So I, to do this on a graph, I would just go find a couple of the key points and move them all up 2. One, two. and then connect those dots. In green, you'll notice I have y equals f of x plus 2. So now I'm going to change the x value on the inside and then apply my function rule, even though it's all ruled up in a graph there. So the plus 2 on the inside corresponds to left 2. Remember I was talking about my black graph here. So I'm going to go back and get the black graph and move all of the points left 2. So this guy moves left 2, left 2, left 2, left 2, and then connect those. Oh, and now it's getting overlaid. That's okay. We can see all the different colors there. Before I go on to my next example, let's take a really quick um, discussion about domain and range. I have a black marker here. So the original function f that's down here in black, what's the domain of f? What are the x values we have involved? So notice it starts here. You might have to zoom in at negative 4. And the x values have an arrow at the end, so it goes on forever. So the domain of f goes from negative 4 to infinity. The range of f, the y values that we have, off, have out on our black graph, they start at negative 2, including, so I'm putting the bracket on it. And again, the arrow on the other end tells me the y values go on forever, so I'll do an infinity. So below that, let's talk about what happens to our domain and range for the red and the green graph. So the domain of the red graph, okay, and the red graph was our function shifted up to. Well, let's look at our picture. What kind of, and you have to look underneath to see the red, what kind of x values do we still have on our red graph? Okay, the domain stayed the same. But the range of our red graph, okay, the red graph got shifted up to, well, that's right a change in its range, the change in the y value. So my range will change as well, up by 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Infinity plus 2 is still infinity. And you'll see that from your graph. The y values for the red graph start at 0 and get bigger as opposed to our green graph, on the green graph, we shifted left, right? That's the domain. Left and right affects our domain. So the domain of our green graph moved left 2 from the original. Negative 4 moves left 2 over to negative 6. But the range stays the same. Your y values are still the same as the original, negative 2 to infinity. Okay, well, two more examples. So f of x, I have the same picture, lazy. And this time we're going to do two graphs with some negative signs. So here's a y equals the opposite of f of x. So I have a negative sign on the outside of our graph. 
of our function. So this is going to be a flip over exactly the x-axis. So all the y values that we used to have right there, I need the opposite. So if they were positive y values, now they're negative y values. Right? And if they were negative before, a negative negative would make it positive. So this is just a rotation over the y-axis. So at this point, negative 4, negative 2 flips over to negative 4, positive 2. Intercepts stay the same. Well, I'm sorry, x-intercepts stay the same. Let's see this point right there. Let's see if I can move that one down. Uh, so that's like between positive 1 and positive 2, negative 1 and negative 2. Let's see, between 2 and 3, I'm up just below 1. Between 2 and 3, down just below. Just above negative 1, there we go. And then this at 4, positive 3-ish. We'll go to 4, negative 3-ish. Okay, let's see if this looks right. Do you see some symmetry there with respect to the x-axis? All right. Okay, my last one for this video. I'm going to take the black graph, f of x minus 1. So that's a shift right 1. And then it's a plus 3 on the outside. So for that, we'll go up 3. So I'll go find those key points again and do that shift with it and then we'll talk about domain and range. Okay, big black dot, right one, up three. Here's our starter point. This negative two zero, I'm gonna go right one, up three. So this should have some, right, it should feel not exactly parallel, but it should feel very close to the black graph. There's just a few points that got shifted around. So this one went there. This is that point. This point right here, let's move it. So I'm going to go right one, up three. Okay, let's get our down point. Right one, up three. And our final point here, I'm going to go right one, up three. And connect those dots. So the domain and range of the original is just like it used to be. Domain negative 4 to infinity, range negative 2 to infinity. And now the red graph. Oh, well that's the same, huh. So I wasn't changing my x values. I was just changing what happened to the y values. So let's see. Oh, and I meant red, not f. Let's see what happens to the range of the red. So the y values, right, I have a y value of plus 2, and then everything else is lower than that. So an interval notation, negative infinity to plus 2. The green graph, domain should change right one, add one to it. Range should change by an up three. Make sure that corresponds, so plus one, so negative three. Infinity doesn't care if you add one or not. Does that correspond to our graph? It does. And the range of G for green Let's see, it should be plus 1 to infinity. So the old range plus 1. I'm sorry, plus 3. And that is, in fact, what we have on our graph.